Hi guys. Hey Periscope, hey Facebook Live. How you guys doing tonight? Oh, let me see if I can turn this around on Periscope. Hi, hi. This one's gonna be a quick one. This is part four in our series about vitamin D. Um, talking about calcium specifically. Um, it's going to be kind of quick. You guys may hear a little bit of rumbling in the background. My kids are getting ready for bed, and um, I hear some soccer playing going on upstairs. So if it's a little noisy today, I'm, I apologize. But, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. I'm packing to go on a cruise, on a leadership cruise with Young Living, and I have not... Um, I have been packing. I have been going crazy trying to get everything ready and set up for me to be out of um, town, out of the country for a little bit. So, um, so I apologize. I know I usually do this earlier in the day, but here we are. So let's talk. Let's get this done fairly quickly tonight. I don't want to um, draw this out any longer. Um, we've been talking. First of all, my name is Christina um, Campbell. I am a um, mother of two. Uh, crazy children tonight um, and a wife um, I'm also a physician um, been practicing for about 20 years and I'm board certified in emergency medicine so um, I am your doctor oily mom um, but I have a preference for natural means if there is a way to address a problem using natural supplements or um, your food your diet exercise um, then I much prefer that to pharmaceuticals. So that's what I'm trying to educate on, and I'm hoping it's been helpful for you all. Um, as far as our vitamin D series, um, we covered, I'm just gonna review the basics. So with vitamin, because if you guys want to hear more detail, please go back and see the first three parts. So as far as review, for vitamin D3 is the type that you want to be supplementing with. You want to be using 35 IU of D3 per pound per day with 200 micrograms of K2 for every 5,000 IU of D3 used. If you're taking less than 5,000 IU of D3, then you still need to be taking a certain amount of K2. Um, most of the literature supports that two, 200 micrograms of K2 per day for most people is enough. Um, unless you're taking uh, more than the 5,000, then you need to increase it, okay? Um, then moving on to magnesium. Now we went over magnesium at great length um, on the last uh, video talking about all the different types of supplementation that you can use. Um, but I wanted to talk about how much. So people ask me, well, how much you didn't cover that? So sorry that I forgot to talk about that. So let's talk about that right now, kind of briefly. Um, it, it, magnesium is one of, those sup, uh, one of those minerals that is absolutely essential for our body. And we talked about that at length last time. Um, it, it monitors, it helps um, at least 35,000 um, different enzymes in the body. So it works on nerves, it works on muscle, it works on the cardiac, on your heart. Um, it helps with hormone um, monitoring. It obviously it helps with bone health. Um, so it is involved in many, many, many aspects of our um, body's, what we call homeostasis, ability to remain in a normal and healthy state. Um, magnesium is a natural um, blood pressure uh, reducer. It also helps to um, regulate cholesterol by, um, by um, interacting with the enzymes that regulate balance of cholesterol in the body. So, that, so those are some of the things that are super important about magnesium. So how do you know how much to take? Really you need to be testing. So a normal blood magnesium level is very inaccurate, what we call a serum level. It's very, very inaccurate. And most of your physician, physicians will tell you that. And the reason for that is because only 100, I'm sorry, only 1% of the magnesium in your entire body is actually in the bloodstream itself, free to be tested. So, um, and the body regulates that and makes sure that there's always a certain amount of magnesium in your bloodstream. So if that bloodstream level drops for some reason because it's pulled out of the body or you don't have enough, then the, the, the body will actually re, um, recruit it from bone or from some other place in your body and then put it back in the bloodstream. So the blood test is very inaccurate. What you want to be using or the most accurate test to use to test for magnesium is something called a magnesium 
RBC test, and that's red blood cell test. Um, the red blood cells um, consistently contain about 40% of your body's magnesium levels. So when those levels drop, then you know you're certainly deficient, okay? Um, I read a book called The Magnesium Miracle, which is kind of a fantastic book. It was written by Dr. Carolyn Dean, um, and she's received many accolades for, um, for this book. So it kind of puts the whole picture together. Um, her recommendation is that you start at 700 milligrams per day of magnesium supplementation, and then just follow your testing. Um, if your doctor will not order a magnesium RBC test for you out of the office, which hopefully they will, but if they won't, then you can actually order it yourself on a place called requestatest.com. Um, I believe it costs somewhere in the range of $50. You can order it for yourself and get, get your own tests done. Hopefully you don't actually have to do that for yourself, but it is important that we take responsibility for our own health. And so if your doctor isn't willing to do it, um, then do it for yourself. So with that test, your goal, you don't really wanna necessarily be looking at the reference range because the lower end of that range is still consistent with a deficiency state. So you want to be aiming for a goal of 6.5 milligrams per deciliter in your magnesium RBC test. Okay, so that's your goal. So start with supplementing with 700 milligrams per day. Um, you may want to start even lower than that if you're having trouble with the diarrhea. But again, check out my last video. Go through the different types of supplements that you can take. Not all of them cause um, loose bowels or um, that kind of problem. So try to find a mix of, of, of what you need, what you can use. And again, go back to that old one, but the, the, the last video. But start at 700 milligrams a day. And then you can increase that or decrease that based on your test results, okay? Now let's talk calcium. So calcium, all our doctors want us to be on calcium, right? Because as soon as we hit menopause, then we're at risk for osteoporosis. And my goodness, we have to be on at least 1,000 or 1,500 milligrams of calcium a day, right? We have to be. Because if we don't, we're going to become osteoporotic, we're going to break our hips, and we're all going to have surgery, and we're, it's all, everything's going to be awful. Well, actually, the literature is, um, is not supporting that. Um, the vitamin D, K2, and magnesium, those three things, if you regulate correctly, and you eat organic calcium in your diet through things like bone broth, which I know I've talked about before, is fantastic for you. Um, citrus fruits are really high in calcium, and dark green leafy vegetables, those are the way to go for sure. Okay, that will give you a slow... Um, steady calcium intake into your body, which your body will use very, very well, especially if you are not magnesium deficient, right? If, you're, if your magnesium levels are where they should be, your vitamin D levels are where they should be, and your K2 levels are where they should be, then all of this will work beautifully together, okay? Um, our bodies were put together in this amazing way, and everything works together in a very specific way, and it works well when it's balanced. So balance is key. Okay, so the preferred way is through this, through, through your diet. Now, if you decide that you want to supplement on top of that, or your doctor tells you you absolutely have to, and, and for whatever reason, you never, never want to have more calcium milligrams in your supplementation than magnesium. A one-to-one -one ratio or slightly more magnesium than calcium is always what you want. And that has to do with that calcium balance, which I've talked about in the last three videos, where if your calcium levels in your bloodstream go up high quickly, your body doesn't actually take that and put it into your bone. What it does is it puts it in your arteries and um, causes atherosclerosis or clogging in your arteries, which can cause heart attack and stroke. It gets cleared through the kidneys and you can get kidney stones from all that extra calcium sitting in your kidneys or trying to be cleared through your kidneys. Um, it can cause bone, um, it can be deposited into the soft tissues in your body, causing things like bone spurs and other things like that. So um, too much calcium all at once is not what our bodies are designed to deal with. So we're not designed to deal with that, okay? So you want a slow amount. Um, uh, there are two ways that I want to talk about um, organic and inorganic. Now, the organic kind is what comes through your diet, and that's what we, we really want to be doing. There is a supplement, one on the market that I'm aware of, that's ca calcium ascorbate, and that is actually calcium mixed with vitamin C 
organic calcium mixed with vitamin C. That is a supplement that you can take that will provide some calcium in an organic state that your body will um, utilize well. Again, though, you don't wanna be taking really high doses all at once, okay? Um, another way of doing it is um, eggshell calcium. I know a lot of people have um, talked about that. You use, you know, you get good quality eggs. You don't wanna use just your regular old stuff. You wanna use good quality eggs from a pastured local farm, pastured eggs, um, healthy chickens. If they're, if they're giving feed as well, you wanna make sure it's a healthy source of feed, okay? And you take your eggshell. When you use your egg, your eggshells, you clean your eggshells and put them in the oven and you heat them at about 200 Fahrenheit, right? Until they're completely dry. Then you can throw them in a coffee grinder and then you come up with this powder like this, right? So you're already buying eggs, if you're already buying eggs, I should say. Some people don't eat eggs. People who are vegetarian or vegan may not be using it. But if you are, this is a cheap and easy way to use what you're gonna throw away anyway, okay? That being said, it is inorganic. It is, it is calcium carbonate. Um, there are some studies out there that show good bioavailability of the calcium carbonate that comes from these eggshells, but the, but the research is done in piglets, <laughs> and I don't know how, how great it is. So again, my big thing, and what most of the research is showing, is that you want a slow, steady um, input of calcium into your body. The preferred way is through foods. Okay, and through and and if you are going to supplement a one to one ratio with your magnesium supplementation and you want it to be a highly bioavailable way and you want it to be low amounts. So one teaspoon of this calcium carbonate powder from eggshells typically contains somewhere between 800 and 1000 milligrams of calcium. So that's a pretty high dose. Right? So if you're supplementing with 700 milligrams of magnesium, you're gonna to wanna to take no more than a half teaspoon of this eggshell powder, and you're only gonna to wanna to use a little bit at a time. So maybe you, if you're using it, and again, I'm not convinced that, that everyone needs that. I'm, I'm really not. But if you choose to do it, then you wanna use a half teaspoon. Maybe you wanna measure it out at the beginning of the day and use a little bit in each meal so that it's gone by the end of the day. That way you're having a slow, steady input of it. You're not taking um, 500 milligrams all at once, okay? So just some food for thought. There needs to be some more research on this, on, on calcium supplementation. Um, I think we need to do more um, delving into what research is already out there. And we need to think about what what medications we're taking. When our doctors say, hey, take this, take this, um, we really need to be thinking about what that can cause in our bodies. Um, so if you guys are interested, you should reach out to Dr. Carolyn Dean. She has a Facebook page um, and she wrote this book, The Magnesium Miracle. It is well worth the read. And um, I hope you guys have a really great night. I hope that this whole series has been really helpful for you. And I'm going to go finish packing, put my kids to bed, finish packing, and I will be cruising soon. So you guys have a wonderful night. If you enjoyed this, if it was helpful for you, please share it with your friends. Um, please give me hearts on Periscope. Gosh, I really love that when I see hearts come up on the screen. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy, like I'm um, not wasting my time, but someone's actually get, really, getting really, really getting something out of this. Um, my friends on Facebook, please share, comment, ask any questions. Um, and I will try to address them on my next, next Facebook Live. Um, I will be cruising next week. I will have no or limited Wi-Fi, so I may not be, be um, doing a Facebook Live next week or a Periscope next week on Monday. Um, if, however, I'm able to find a spot where I can do it, I will. Um, but don't count on me, okay? And um, I will be back after my cruise to tell you all about it. You guys have a wonderful night. Um, go take your vitamin D, your magnesium, and your K2. Okay, let's all get healthy together. Have a great night.